Welcome, my name is Marc Arnaud Navarro um, and I am, I am about to introduce you to my bachelor thesis regarding virtual reality to enhance, enhance safety and health in construction, more specifically an online multiplayer serious game. The objective of this, thesis, of, of this thesis was to create a 3D environment in virtual reality featuring the most common risks in the construction site where the students had to uh, make certain tasks whilst following the safety and healthy rules. The motivation for me to do this bachelor thesis was that the construction lobby needed an upgrade in their technologies and at this point they didn't have anything similar to virtual reality. It also involved, involved creating video games which to me was something interesting and I had the chance to remember what I had learned about the Revit software and other civil engineering softwares. Moreover, I had the chance to learn about Unity, which is the software that I used to create this video game, and to learn C-sharp programming, which is something that we didn't really do in the Bachelor. So which were the innovation features that we were searching for with this project? Well, using the Unity 3D engine, we wanted to achieve some kind of team training for our students, where they had to collaborate or compete between themselves. We also wanted to have some kind of visual application of movements so that players could see what other players were doing and therefore they could interact with each other and help themselves find um, difficult or, or dangerous interactions. We wanted, we wanted it to be a non-guided non -guided experience because we thought that this would give more freedom, freedom to the players. We also wanted to introduce bots and new risks that at that point they never had been included in experiences like this. And finally, the way that we had to do it was through an online multiplayer game. So which were some of the most important challenges that we faced? Well, first of all, the programming in C Sharp and Unity 3D, because I didn't know, we didn't know if we could get to the necessary skill level, we didn't know where to find the reliable information, or if actually Unity was capable of creating online games. Also, we had some problems with synchronism between the different versions of the game playing in the different computers. We didn't know if we had compatibility between virtual reality and the Unity 3D engine. And also, we didn't really know how to uh, relate the scripts um, that were being run inside the game. So which was the building process of this whole serious game? Well, first we had a sample scene which basically consisted on a camera with some audio and this box and we used this to start interacting with the program and learn how, how we were going to develop this whole project. When we found ourselves a little bit more comfortable with it, we went to the visual scene where, as you can see, we imported a building from Revit and we also had a small character there and again with our pink cube to, uh, to start training the interactions. Later we went to the networking scene where we started uh, doing the whole networking um, platform with the online game in it so that we could have multiple players interacting in the, in the game. Then the player net scene where we put the time, the points and the life. Then the gameplay matchmaking scene, where as you can see, we already have all the textures, uh, the crane, different materials, and that's the most advanced point in the game, visually talking. And finally, we had the virtual reality scene, which consisted on three features, immersion, first person view, and 3D, which is what defines this virtual reality that we were uh, searching for. So how does the game work? Um, the networking part was the most tricky one, so I'm going to explain a little bit um, how it worked. Let's say that we have a server, which is a computer that controls the whole program, and usually this server is one of the players, okay? And the, all the other players are called clients, and each client controls a player, as you can see here, uh, marked with a smiley face. So let's say that player one is a, a client and he puts himself a helmet. So Player one clicks and the information that he has the helmet goes to the server. And then the server says, okay, 
client one, your player, player one has a helmet. And in order for this to be copied in all the versions of the game running in the other player's uh, screens, the server also sends the information to client two and client three saying, hey, remember, player one has a helmet on. And this is done through commands and client RPCs, which are functions in the code that, as you can see, they are marked here as blue and red lines. How does this look in a script kind of way? Well, we define a public game object inside the game that we will call helmet head. And then using the, fun the function void update, which runs in every frame, we say, okay, if we click the left, the left mouse button, we run the command helmet function. And as you can see, the command helmet function calls the RPC helmet function. And the RPC helmet function, what basically does is, it goes to the helmet head object, it sets its renderer zone, which means that you can actually view it in your screen, and therefore now you have a helmet in your head. Well, so which were the innovations that we achieved after this whole process using the Unity 3D engine? Well, on the team training feature, we see that now we have one of the players transporting a material. He's going to the cranes platform and this player leaves it there and the other player is already on the top floor of the building waiting for this material to go up. Then this player that already has on the helmet, the harness and it's connected to the lifeline uh, because of security issues waits for this material to go up there and he would take it and build the wall. As we can see here, the collaboration competition system was done through time constraints and with a point system, as you can see here in a red square. And also you can see the life of the player in this case is already a little bit diminished because he might have done some kind of mistake. The visual application of movements we were talking about was done through this tree of animations, as you can see here. The arrows between, uh, between the different squares are the relations that make these animations pop up or not. We also achieved this non-guided experience using the Kolb's model, which basically is defined here in this small scheme. Then we had the bots implemented. The figure that you are seeing here transporting material was a bot. They are really simply done, but we also had uh, an excavator moving around and the crane and other kind of players that, as you can see here, they were, for example, cutting through a column. Then after the bots, we programmed the new risks. Um, as you can see here, this player lost a little bit of life when uh, he fell from one of the floors. Uh, you can see here that using the first aid kit, he gained some life, but you can also get burned by the sparks. Uh, you can also get run over with the excavator if you get too close to it and it touches you. Or for example, if you are not careful enough and the platform hits you. And this was done through an online multiplayer game. As you can see here, the two players are interacting and they are in the same version of the game and both of them are, are doing their work together. So how does it look uh, when we have two players? Well, as you can see in this video, in the left screen we have one player and on the right one we have another one and they are playing together at the same time. And as you can see here, but as you can see here in the left screen, we have one player and in the right screen we have the other player. Right now they are taking their equipment, they are putting on the helmets and the harnesses. And as you can see now, they are prepared. One goes to take the materials to transport them to the platform crane and the other one heads already to the top floor to wait for these materials to be brought to him. Um, during this process, well, the players have to connect to the lifeline, as you can see that the player on the right is doing now. Uh, then you cannot see, you cannot fall from the building. And as you can see in the right screen, this player is already waiting for the materials to come to his, to him, and the other one is already um, going for the next round of materials to be brought up. Okay, so through this project, I had the chance to go to the ORP International Congress in Cartagena de Indias in Colombia. And as you can see here, this was the work of my good friend Oscar. And we were showing how this virtual reality can be applied to safety and health through this woman that was trying to climb an electric tower. This is me in the Congress and this project was a complete success and we are really happy that we made it. 
So which are the conclusions of this project? Well, first of all, is that given the expectations, the, there is a clear necessity to have a maturity in this technology, but it's reasonable to suggest an implementation of VR in safety and health. Also, the networking feature was a success because it opens a whole new world of options in the cooperation between players and the interactions in the construction site. The 3D environment, environment that we created was well detailed and it had the textures, the materials and the sounds that were needed to provide the necessary realism. Moreover, the AI bots, although they were really simple, they had importance in the experience because they could affect at your performance. And finally, we wanted to say that the Unity 3D software prefabricated components, although they are really useful, they can lack some flexibility when you are developing this game. So in a future version, we might do, it, we might do them ourselves. And through this project, uh, what we could do was to have our own construction in a 3D model to make our own itineraries with our own activities at any time. So which are the future research lines? Well, in this case, uh, we want to achieve a better compatibility between networking and the virtual reality softwares. Um, we wanted to script some, some scripts for complex machines, such as excavators or cranes to train uh, in a safety environment. We also wanted to make a prefab of activities so that we don't have to program each activity each time. And finally, the training of specific teams, uh, such as uh, teams that have to do um, difficult activities in certain amounts of time, that they need to be really, really efficient. So this was my presentation. Thank you all for your attention and until next time.